Hi there, my name is Matthew Leonardi. I'm a gynecological surgeon and sinologist at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. I'm also a PhD candidate at the University of Sydney under the supervision of Professor George Condes. I'd like to thank Iswag for the invitation to present this masterclass to you all. Today, we're going to be focusing on matching the ultrasound and surgical pictures in patients with endometriosis. I hope that you find this session educational. Here are my disclosures. And this is where I can be reached, either at email or on Twitter at Matthew Leonardi. I encourage those of you who are already on social media to connect with me here. And if you're not, I encourage you to consider joining as it is a wonderful educational and networking platform. My guiding principle as a surgeon and sinologist is that surgeons should not be surprised by what they find at surgery. And more importantly, patients should not be surprised to learn of surgical findings when they awake. This is what has driven me to become the surgeon and sinologist that I am today and drives my efforts going forward to advance myself clinically and academically. Surgery and ultrasound are absolutely complementary in nature. They're both technical, they're both 3D spatial, and ultrasound, of course, leads to improved ability to perform surgery, to have better outcomes, and surgery is the way to get feedback to understand what we're seeing on ultrasound. Today, we're gonna meld these two and, uh, and hopefully you'll find this helpful. We're gonna start with an area that people are very familiar with already, which is the ovaries. Here is a laparoscopic depiction of a large left ovarian endometrioma that's just ruptured with puncture. It is slightly stuck to the pelvic side wall. Here we have a video depiction of a much more adherent left ovary without an endometrioma. The left fallopian tube is also stuck here to the pelvic sidewall. With our laparoscopic tools, we are using a very strong force to bluntly dissect the ovary off of the pelvic sidewall. This ovary is also stuck at the level of the uterus sacral ligament, which is just under this area here. This is where the uterus sacral ligament exists sort of see it there. It's also stuck to the uterus. You can see all of this disease around the ovary. And we're still working very hard to push that ovary up and off to normalize this anatomy. In this video, we have again a very, very densely adherent left ovary, which is just underneath our instruments. Here's our fallopian tube. We've already opened the peritoneum slightly. And our goal here is to mobilize this ovary, which in this case does also have an endometrioma, and you'll see rupture of the fluid just there. This ovary is very close in proximity to our ureter, and in order to safely excise the endometriosis and the endometrioma, we need to move this from the ureter here. Now, here are some sonographic depictions of the ovaries. Here's an ovary, and this ovary with the transvaginal ultrasound probe, simply going in and out, we're able to push that ovary uh, and identify its mobility against its surroundings. Here we have an ovary that is also mobile and particularly I'm trying to depict its mobility against the uterus in this plane just here. You can see that there is sliding present. Here is an ovary that is adherent in some areas, but not all. So against the pelvic sidewall, we can see some mobility, some sliding, but the ovary is very clearly stuck to the uterus and the lower part of the um, pelvis here, which is the uterus sacral ligament, although the uterus sacral ligament is not exactly depicted in this clip. And this ovary has an endometrioma as well. In this video here, we have an entirely fixed uh, left ovary with um, an endometrioma present and it's fixed against the uterus, the uterus sacral ligament and the pelvic sidewall. In this video here, our left ovary is just here, our uterus sacral ligament is here, our uterus is here. There's a very small endometrioma noted here and you can see there's this area of irregularity. This ovary is completely stuck to this spot here and in order to safely dissect the ovary, and remove the endometrioma, we need to be aware of this preoperatively. This is very close in proximity to the patient's ureter. Here we have a video of bilateral ovarian endometriomas, left and right. They are adherent to each other in the midline. These are kissing ovaries. And you can see here some hypochoic nodularity. This is actually rectal deep endometriosis present. 
And so if you see ovarian endometriomas, you should have a high degree of suspicion that there is coinciding deep endometriosis present. The rectouterine pouch, also known as the pouch of Douglas, also known as the cul-de-sac, is a very important area uh, to be able to describe sonographically uh, to allow for very good surgical planning. Here we have a video of a normal pelvis with a normal pouch of Douglas, rectouterine pouch. You see our uterosacral ligaments here joining at the torus uterinus. This is peritoneum overlying the pouch, very normal non-obliterated pouch. Here we have a video of a sliding sign, and you can see the entirety of the posterior uterus and posterior retrocervix is sliding against the contents posteriorly, particularly the bowel. And so this is a non-obliterated pouch. Here we have a video depicting a partial obliteration state. So we have a right uterosacral ligament. You can see some peritoneum of the pouch, but not all. The bowel here is adherent to the left uterosacral ligament and left posterior uterine serosa. And so because you cannot see the entirety of the peritoneum between the uterosacral ligaments, this is partial obliteration. In this case, we have a complete obliteration of the rectouterine pouch. You cannot see any peritoneum at all. You cannot see any anatomy beneath these uh, very dense adhesions. If you were to simply look at this laparoscopically, you would have no idea what lies beneath. Ultrasound is essential in these patients to be able to identify the areas of disease uh, within the posterior compartment. Here we have a video of a negative sliding sign. You have no sliding of the posterior uterine serosa or posterior retrocervical serosa along the contents behind. There's also a hypococonodularity just here at the level of the torus, which likely represents deep endometriosis. Moving on to the uterosacral ligaments and the peritoneum. The uterosacral ligaments remain a very difficult area to identify using ultrasound. The diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for uterosacral endometriosis is still very low as per our uh, IDEA pilot study that we are presenting at this ISUOG this year. So I highly encourage people to try to improve their ability to visualize the uterosacral ligaments. In this side-by-side uh, -side depiction, we have ultrasounds view of the uterosacral ligaments as per this hyperechoic band here in the posterior compartment, very adjacent to the vagina, which is hypoechoic, and the very uh, thin hyperechoic band of the peritoneum. Imagine the probe is uh, in view of this. So you're slightly uh, angled. Uh, in this case, if you're looking at the left uterosacral ligament, your hand is going to be anti or counterclockwise rotated. In this video here, we have the depiction of the uterosacral ligament. So we start the uh, video in the midline. In the midline, we can see the vagina and we can see a thinner peritoneum just here. And as we move our hand laterally, we can see this white line thickening. This white line becomes the uterosacral ligament. In this depiction here, we have a deep endometriosis nodule that is partly in the uterosacral ligament, but is extending laterally into the perimetrium. And this uh, is affecting the patient's ureter in this case, and you'll see this soon. So here is a surgical depiction of this nodule. Here it is. You can only appreciate the tip of the iceberg, whereas in ultrasound, you can see the ex entire extent of the lesion and you can't yet appreciate that the ureter here is being extrinsically affected, but you can see that in a subsequent video, which uh, is after this slide. Here we have a deep endometriosis nodule within the uterosacral ligament. And uh, like the uh, laparoscopic depiction of complete obliteration of the pouch of Douglas, you might not see that if you operated on this person because they would also have obliteration of the pouches depicted by this negative sliding sign here. This is the video depicting the hydroureter in the patient who has uterosacral deep endometriosis. You can see the very dilated ureter that is extending uh, from the area of that nodule. So there's the nodule and this is the initiation of the hydroureter just here. So I highly encourage individuals to access this free article that uh, Professor George Condis and I have written. Simply open your smartphone camera, shine your camera at this QR code and a link will pop up. Click that link, it'll take you directly to the article. 
Next, we're going to talk a little bit about superficial endometriosis. And uh, for those of you that are not surgeons in the room, here are some depictions of superficial endometriosis at laparoscopy. The appearance is varied. Sometimes it is very obvious and sometimes it is very subtle with vesicular like lesions that are clear in, uh, in color. Here are a few more depictions of uterus, sorry, superficial endometriosis. Peritoneal pockets are a classic feature of superficial endometriosis as the inflammation of the endometriosis leads to this retraction of peritoneum. Here we have some adhesions as well. The ability to visualize superficial endometriosis was born out of the performance of what Professor Condes and I describe as saline infusion sonopodography, pod being the pouch of Douglas. This is a, a ultrasound procedure whereby we introduce fluid through the uterus and through the fallopian tubes and it enters the pouch and collects in this area. This allows us first and foremost to identify anatomic areas uh, very, very clearly. So we can see here our rectovaginal septum. We can see where it ends and where the pouch begins. We can see our posterior vaginal fornix and the peritoneum overlying that posterior vaginal fornix. Formerly, there were uh, cases that were called rectovaginal septal endometriosis that uh, we realized are likely simply within that peritoneum of the pouch. Here's a transverse view of the pelvis with fluid. You can see the rectum in cross section, the overlying peritoneum, the pelvic sidewalls, the pararectal space peritoneum just here as well. Superficial endometriosis on SPG or an ultrasound at baseline is defined relative to peritoneal surfaces, much clearer when there's fluid in the pelvis rather than no fluid. We can identify this by superficial hypoechoic areas, hyperechoic projections, cystic areas, pockets of fluid, and filmy irregular adhesions. We must interpret the findings of our ultrasound in the context of the patient's history, particularly if they have had surgeries in their pelvis in the past. Here is a video depiction of superficial endometriosis on ultrasound as depicted by a hyperechoic projection off of the peritoneum. And here is the co-inciding view laparoscopically. Here is a depiction of interrupted peritoneum as per a little hypoechoic area within that peritoneum just behind the vagina and the cervix here. Here we have a small cystic area which is measuring only three uh, millimeters in its largest dimension, and here we have the laparoscopic view. Here we have a small hypochoic area with a hyperechoic focus. This corresponds to this very small peritoneal pocket that contains some of this fluid, hence the hypochoic appearance as well as the hyperechoic focus as, as depicted just there. It's very subtle, but it is present and visible on ultrasound. Here we have a very small distortion of the peritoneum. And this is depicted by two hyperechoic foci and just some irregularity with which corresponds to the features here and here. In this video, we have an incomplete septation, which equates to a peritoneal pocket at the time of laparoscopy. You can also see just here, there is some hypochoic features and a very small hyperechoic focus here as well on that uh, uterosacral ligament. In this video here, we have a thin peritoneum uh, just adjacent to the vagina. And if you focus on this area just here, we can see that there's a very, very small hypococonodularity within that peritoneum, which equates to superficial endometriosis within the peritoneum of the pouch of Douglas at laparoscopy. I highly encourage everybody to access this very recent article that is still free access for another uh, couple of weeks. This is a diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound for superficial endometriosis. And we don't have that much time to go over it, but I will point out that in those patients who have no deep endometriosis, ovarian endometriosis, or obliteration of the pouch, we have identified about eight out of 10 patients with ultrasound, which means that we are improving our ability to diagnose all forms of endometriosis, all phenotypes of endometriosis non-invasively. Also importantly, we did not have any false positives where we identified something on ultrasound that was then not identified at laparoscopy. By reading the paper, you can actually go through the, uh, the study in, in quite a lot of detail and understand the exact technique that took place. This is also something that I'm very much uh, excited to speak about and uh, again would be happy to speak about it by email or via Twitter. Please do scan the QR code and access the article.
here is my contact information. Uh, finally, I would just like again to thank Iswag for the warm welcome to present this masterclass today. Uh, I'm very honored to present it and I do hope that everybody found that it was beneficial. Thank you again. Bye-bye.